and to try to figure out um, a way to eradicate it is, I suppose, difficult because it requires a change in consciousness. It's, I suppose, a, an, an example of inertia. Things have always been that way. People have always been poor. The Bible says, the poor you shall always have with you. And to overcome the poverty requires a real transformation in human consciousness and in human will to reach a point where we simply won't permit it. Yes, and that's the important uh, thing to remember about the UN, that, that <clears throat> it is perhaps the only um, organization in the world that can handle this, uh, the, the massive size of this problem because um, it, it's, it's more than just one country can deal with especially the uh, third world nations, they don't have the resources. So the UN provides a forum where all of the, the world's resources can be uh, brought together and can be um, uh, distributed at the appropriate place and the appropriate time and the appropriate amount. And uh, this is the great spiritual, um, the great spiritual meaning behind the UN. It, it provides a, a, a source of international distribution mm -hmm. of energy. Yes, that's and a good way I think to put that's um, one, uh, one thing that the world is really lacking, and, and that's because it enables human consciousness to begin to think more universally, and uh, that's the s step according to the plan of God in which humanity should be moving towards a more universal understanding at a universal level of consciousness and the UN is right there to help us in that expansion. It isn't only poverty and human suffering that the UN uh, focuses on. Another example of this distribution that you speak of is the world's postal delivery. I once went to a briefing at the United Nations that explained the work of the UN behind the scenes in the working out of uh, various agreements that allow mail to transit from, say, South America to Asia. All of this happens because of agreements and practices that were worked out through the UN's auspices, that we get our mail and are able to send letters uh, around the world. Another example is shipping and airlines travel that are coordinated by the uh, offices of the UN. It's, it's a global body. Uh, another example is uh, the overseeing of copyright law, which is such a hot eye, uh, item today with the um, pirating of um, material off the internet. The world's intellectual property uh, office in Geneva oversees the um, protection of intellectual property, which means uh, creative works of all sorts. That's one of the major contributions of the UN. And another is um, the spread of disease, with travel being what it is today. If anybody remembers the outbreak of SARS a couple of years ago in Asia, it threatened the whole world. And uh, the World Health Organization, an agency of the UN, brought it to a halt through its very effective and uh, immediate uh, action. And um, I think one of the good things about this pamphlet, uh, the uh, United Nations Humanities Challenge, is that in the center fold it has a graft of um, an outline of all the um, all the councils and the and the um, groups that make up the UN, the International Court of Justice, the Security Council, the General Assembly, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, and the Secretariat, and all the subcategories and uh, organizations and specialized agencies that work under these major groupings. And it gives an outline of the, of the whole UN structure so that one gets a complete picture of the, uh, the UN, the, the broad and vast um, spread that it has throughout the world. And because it is so broad and so huge in scope, it's, an, it's a, a very large bureaucracy. And I don't want our listeners to think that we are oblivious or unaware of the bureaucratic problems that the UN is um, facing. And Kofi Annan has been called on the carpet by the recent um, 
um, issuing of a report by Paul Volcker and his team that oversaw the problems of corruption. They weren't blamed on Kofi Annan himself, but on um, his office, which is uh, the ultimate uh, bearer of responsibility. The UN has a lot of work to do, but it is composed of so many different cultures and temperaments that I think it's probably miraculous there aren't bigger problems in bringing people from such different traditions and backgrounds together to focus on common projects and goals. It's um, The UN is only as successful as humanity wants it to be, in my opinion. It's a reflector of the state of human consciousness, not better than, not worse than, the best and the worst in humanity. But it's a global forum. You could say it's... Um, it's a place where the mind of humanity can work to envision solutions to world problems and to cooperate in the working out of God's plan for our world on earth. And uh, we should be more aware of the opportunity that the UN offers. And that's the important thing. There is a connection there between uh, the plan of God and the founding of the United Nations. It's a uh, it's, it's a direct uh, impression, if you want to say, uh, from on high, from about the need for a world organization that could handle problems on a world scale. And uh, the, like they used, used to say, if the UN hadn't been founded, well, then it would have to be founded now. And if it wasn't founded then, because we need the UN in the world, and it just isn't appreciated. Certainly it's not perfect, and it has a lot of problems to work out, but they are working at them, and uh, there is no uh, perfect government in the world that can really uh, throw stones at the UN because there, uh, every government has its own problems likewise. So uh, <clears throat> that's why the, the UN isn't perfect because it's run by imperfect individuals. Please take advantage of our special offer, the special offer from Lewis's Trust. It's a pamphlet. It's, uh, it's for free. It's um, um, based on the topic that we were talking about today. And the title of the pamphlet, The United Nations Humanities Challenge. Uh, so just ask for the free pamphlet. You don't even have to pay for shipping and handling. Call up, ask for the United Nations Humanities Challenge, once again available at no charge. Uh, it offers a review of current ideas for United Nations reform as well as a depiction of the spiritual significance of the UN. I think it's wonderful for school teachers. A uh, possible uh, you know, lesson can be based on it. It's also just uh, a terrific reading uh, for one to peruse it and get some uh, truth about the United Nations. There's so much uh, uh, propaganda against it lately, but uh, it's a force for good. And I think you'll realize that as you read the pamphlet. Uh, Give us a call at 1-866-695-8247. Uh, you've been listening to Inner Sight. Now we would like to close with a world prayer called the Great Invocation. It's a call for light and love and goodwill to flow into the world and into our hearts. Let's listen for a moment to these powerful words. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.